Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome to Locale Live. I've got the uh, Walmart shoppers here, Mr. Boogie2988, and of course, the legendary COD Master <laughs> Wings of Redemption. <laughs> guys, we just watched a video on DSP. He called you guys Walmart shoppers. He made it seem like he didn't need money, a guy that just recently filed for bankruptcy. And, and basically called you guys uh, a desperate, and it, it seems like a, a massive cope. I really feel this is the difference between myself and the other people who people consider lol cows, all right? When you look at the Wings of Redemptions, when you look at the Boogies, you look at these people, here's the difference. Boogie and Wings, they shop at Walmart. Right? Anything to get ahead, anything to make a buck, anything to fucking get them to a position where they're they're doing something because they need that, right? I don't need that. I'm I'm successful. I have a business. I'm good. People come and watch my content. They enjoy my content. They support my content. I do positive content all day. I don't do this lol cow shit. People try to pull me into their spinning vortex of drama shit. So but I stay out of it. So why would I want to be involved in a show like that? I'd be a moron, right? Before all this drama with the Lol Cow podcast, okay? I was friendly with Boogie. Over the years, we had had a few conversations behind the scenes, uh, back and forth. Uh, not long conversations, very short ones, brief ones, a little, little, you know, how you doing, hope you're doing all right, or whatever, back and forth, like, like Twitter DMs and shit like that, right? And one of the conversations that we had had was about particularly working together on something and at this point there was a situation where we were talking early on about this lol cow podcast and the possibility and stuff like that right and i'm gonna paraphrase it all right i'm not gonna sit here and read the direct dms i had with boogie this was over a year ago this so again this is before any of the drama of this year or anything like that as we're having this conversation we're talking about the possibility of working with keemstar on a podcast or whatever right the way he equated it, I know this is weird because I didn't bring this up, he did. Boogie actually said something to the effect of the way he sees YouTube or, or how YouTube is, is kind of like Walmart, all right? So let's think about that. <laughs> it's kind of like Walmart. Well, Walmart, everyone knows, is a pretty bad business, right? Walmart comes into town with the lowest prices, the lowest cost for, for their products, and when a Walmart comes to town, they sweep in and they take over. They could cause all the small businesses in a town to go completely out of business. Now, Walmart is a fine company. They don't break laws. They do everything law-abiding and, you know, they're on the up and up. But, man, when they come in, they can completely wipe clean a small town. And now the whole town's focused on the Walmart, right? That's YouTube in a nutshell. That's literally YouTube. And that's this lol cow culture on YouTube. What you found is you found people who are so desperate, right? They need to make money in some way. They can't just operate anymore and have a life on YouTube for some reason. Maybe they, you know, their popularity has waned. Maybe they just made a ton of mistakes or whatever. And the only way that they can get attention on YouTube is by creating drama. So what they do is they create the drama. They know the drama's toxic. They know that it's harmful. They know that it's not good. But that's the only way that they can get by. So they sit there and they create drama. And then everyone else sits outside and says, ha, now we capitalize and we jump on this and we make two hour documentaries and we do podcasts about them and we slam them and we rip them a new butthole and we constantly make fun of them and we meme on them and we milk them. Milk them. Are you aware that Turkey Tom is part of this lol cow culture and lol cow cast? I didn't know that. I wasn't, I don't watch it. I'm not paying attention to it. Oh yeah, he's he's called one of the lol cow farmers. Him and Mudahar and others, they're showing up to every show and they're not highlighted like lol cows. They're highlighted like like big shots, right? They come to the show in order to basically degrade the subjects of the show, which at this point I guess is Boogie and and Wings and whoever this other person is who was my replacement cuz I didn't do the show even though you can't replace someone who never agreed to do the show um but whoever they are I guess right they're basically it's like a shooting gallery like here's the people who are supposed to be the hosts but in reality they're just the targets of ridicule and toxic behavior it, again they're just people shooting down at them 
they're being degraded to the point where I guess Boogie was forced to get on his hands and knees and apologize to Keemstar because he went on someone else's show and there was drama and he's like, you should have done that on our show to make us money. Now apologize to me that you did this because you're so stupid. And he did it apparently. I'm sorry, Tommy C. I'm sorry, Daddy Keemstar. I'm sorry, Nicholas De, F De Fiorio. I don't know how to pronounce him. I'm sorry, Jordy. I'm fucking sorry. It was fucking stupid of me to go on Rich's fucking show and give away the fucking storyline. Right? Now, again, I didn't see any of this. This is people telling me this. And I'm like, can you imagine? I'm sorry, but I, anyone who's involved in this lol cow culture shit, you got to get yourself fucking reassessed at a fucking professional. Because there's a difference between, oh, there's some celebrity gossip or, oh, no, my entire source of entertainment is actually when other people get harmed or we, we bully people, we degrade them. It's fucked up. All right? So, I want you to know how disgusting that sounds. You're milking a human. Okay? Not even for sus. You're not milking them for milk. You're milking them for profits, for money. And every time you do that, you hurt them. But you don't care. There's no... No, there's no reason. No, no quality. You know, no, no moral compass here. Who cares, right? You're dehumanizing the person. You're turning them... You're literally categorizing them as, a, as an animal. Not a human. You're, you've degraded them to the point that they're just cattle, all right? The absolute quicker you get out of this toxic vortex, the better. Especially for someone like Turkey Tom, who seems like he's got his head on his shoulders, he's smart, he's intelligent, he could make great content, but he has to get out of the toxic vortex now before you're stuck in it forever. Because guess what? You'll be the next lol cow. You'll be the next one who 10 years down the line, you're desperate for content. And what are you going to do to get it? Well, all you ever did was make fun of people. No one cares about you anymore. Now what are you supposed to do, right? You're the next one on the list, man. Uh, Boogie, where yeah. are you in, on, on, on this particular thing? I mean, I'll just be honest with you. Phil is just one of the very human, very few human beings in the world I actively dislike. I, 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 I think I hate that guy. Genuinely. It's not me? <laughs> no, no. Look, you, you're, you're uh, uh, redeemable. You're forgivable. Everything... That I hate about myself, I see in Dark Side Phil amplified <laughs> up to a level. Right? Yeah, like enough. every yeah. insecurity I have, he's the walking version of that. I, I talk yeah, about just, money, he spends every day begging for money. He gets uh, mad when he doesn't get it. He, I, like, uh, unhealthiness, mentally unaware, oblivious, uh, g delusions of grandeur, everything I have a little bit, he has all of it. He hoards you know, it like I do M&Ms, dude. I don't think you're as bad, to be honest with you, because you can actually recall a place, time when you screwed up. Wings, uh, where are, did you watch this video? How did it make you feel? Do you feel like a Walmart shopper? Are you cheap? Or are you just a loser that, that, that was forced to work with GameStar? Well, I look at this. I, under, I understand that I'm Friends Season 7 and that if you have a show <laughs> any length of time, there's a period where it's peaks and there's a period, there's peaks and valleys and everything. And... I'm at the tail end of my career, and like this gives me an opportunity to reinvigorate myself and put myself in front of a new audience once again because I've been doing this thing for 16 years, Phil. Yeah. 16 years. That means like most people that subscribe to my channel right now are dead subscribers. Most of them could be dead subscribers. You know, they could get yeah, car some of them actually <laughs> died. Yeah. So, like, I needed this opportunity to refresh myself to put myself in front of new eyes again. And here's the kicker, Phil. <clears throat> we didn't get the $50,000 because of you. And yeah. we still decided to do this podcast because yeah. just the opportunity alone was worth to do it. So let me, let me talk a little bit about what Phil is referencing in this video, this Walmart thing, okay? So I used to talk to Phil every once in a while. I would message him, and I just knew he was like a guy on the internet that people hated on, right? I didn't never really look into him. And I just assumed it was unfair criticism, right? Um, and so I would write him every once in a while. And when this pitch for this podcast came along, I went into his DMs to try to convince him to do it. And he told me, he's like, no, I won't do anything with Keemstar. I don't work with Keemstar. Keemstar is trash. I don't do that. And I'm like, dude, look, nobody likes their job, right? Okay. Very Nobody few. likes their boss. Right. Exactly. Right? <laughs> but this yeah. is a fifty thousand dollar payday, right? Like Walmart's <laughs> all over this nation. Yeah. All right. Nobody likes clocking in at Walmart, but you need the paycheck. Okay. Your life doesn't have to revolve about where you work. Your life should be outside of where you work. Show up for the paycheck, man. 
And, like, he thinks he's above working at Walmart. He even said he's above shopping at Walmart. All right, what are you? A guy, you ain't above a, nobody, Phil. You ain't above that, nobody or nothing. A guy that just recently declared bankruptcy is basically telling that he's above what you guys are doing. What It is really that bad. You're just uh, you talking me, about yourself and talking what, about your history of the Internet. Let me tell you what I'm doing, Phil. I'm doing this because I have a wife who's a cancer survivor. I'm a 400-pound man that's going to get sick. And any chance I have a chance to broaden my business or potentially make money, ooh, make fucking money, I'm going to try to do it. Because, like, at the end of the day, I'm doing this for more than just myself. Quit being selfish. Yeah. I, I'm doing this for similar reasons, but let me go ahead and add that I'm doing it because I know who I am. I know what I am. I know that I'm a guy who puts his foot in his mouth every single t opportunity I get. I've done it in my personal life. I've done it in my private life, and I've done it online. So if I get an opportunity to make money from one of my biggest faults, why wouldn't I do it? Right? Like pay me to be the idiot that I can be sometimes. And in fact, one of the coolest things about this podcast is I get to come in here and ramp it up. I get to I get to be exceptionally autistic, exceptionally idiotic. I, and I get paid to do it. People are entertained by it. And most of the time, especially in the pilot episodes we filmed, I walked away feeling good about it. I'm like, that's going to be funny. That's going to be outrageous. People are going to enjoy it. I'm going to have a good time. I've it's tried to watch Phil's better. show. Yeah, I've tried to watch Phil's show. You know, the only thing that Phil's show does, it bores me to sleep to begin with. Okay, Digital melody. And, yeah, and then <laughs> and, and on top of that, um, who who's he thinks he? Uh, I'm just so mad. I can't even talk. All right, he's yeah, well, he thinks he's better than you guys. He thinks so that, he's that's better than everybody. That's the problem. Yeah. It's not that okay. Nobody's better than me, and I ain't no better than nobody. Okay, I learned that in Head Start. That was fourth grade. Shit. We learned that shit in fourth grade. Okay, we're all just people trying to make it work, Phil. All right. By the way, Phil, this is my message directly to you, Phil. And I want to make it abundantly clear. You don't think you're part of this podcast, right? Except every episode we've uploaded, you've talked about it. All right. It's every You've talked one. about it. You've tweeted about it. And guess what? I'm going to bring you up in every single episode from here on out. We're going to have a segment where I talk about how you e beg this week, about the stupid shit you said about me, about Wings, about Tommy, about the show. I'm going to make sure. And I know, Phil, watch. Look at me when I tell you this. You're going to respond every single time. I know you will. I dare I got you to try not to. I got something into duty streams. Look, I don't, and you guys are probably supporting this. I don't I necessarily believe everything that the troll video guys put out, but uh, I'm just just going to report this. So um, I, I don't know if it's wrong or not, but duty streams reported that Phil went on Thanksgiving. He begged his brains out, acted like, you know, his life is going to fall apart. And he claims he has a Twitter account. That is like Phil's secondary account. I can't verify whether it is. It very, it very well may be. And he bragged about dumping 800 bucks. This is just in the last 24 hours on WWE champions. Where? <laughs> what do you think of that? Jordan, you ever do anything like that? No, I've never. I, I've spent $600 on Rainbow Six over a seven year span. But I'm pretty, pretty open with that. But like Phil's spent conservatively. 50 grand on WWE champions. And like some people some say reports this, is up to 100,000. Yeah, 100,000 plus, right? It's insane to me because I'm addicted to Magic the Gathering and I haven't spent that much on the physical game, much less the digital game. Like the digital uh, new set comes out of the digital game, I'll spend 50 bucks, which adds up to like $200, $250 a year. How do you spend that kind of money on anything? I mean, you know, other than hookers. I, I, but on a mobile <laughs> game, on a mobile game. On a mobile, at least I got wings. on a mobile game, a Jeez. pay to win game. You know, no the, you know what I hate the most about Phil, though? Like, this What's is that? the thing that's always irked me. There was a, a few years back, Phil had problems with the IRS, and mm. Phil needed to raise I don't know the number, let's call the number four thousand dollars or something like that, right? Phil had to raise four thousand dollars to pay his back taxes, and Phil had this. I want to call it a begathon, but like he, he calls it something else. I don't know what he calls it, but basically it's like this marathon stream where he streams for like 12 hours and he plays like three or four different games and everybody comes out and he has positive content. It, well, yeah. he goes out there and he makes like $6,400. So he clears his goal. 
So what ends up happening, so you see, he takes this $6,400 and he spends $2,500 that night on WWE champions and total wine. These people came hmm. out here to bail you out of your IRS taxes and you took the money they gave you to go towards that tax debt and you spent it on a video game and alcohol. According to Duty Streams, he did it last night. Yeah. And he got this like Twitter account. I'll send it to Connor if he wants. If you are filing bankruptcy and that's what you're doing with your money, that's disgusting. Well, and he, he, but, disgusting. He's, but he's too good to come on here. Yeah, yeah. Coward. Yeah. I mean, I mean here's just, the just look at them. Just look at $100,000 on fucking Hogan pictures. You can have a, Corvette, <laughs> a brand new Corvette or you can have this stack of digital Hogan pictures. Like, what are you doing, Phil? <laughs> You know, you know what really, you know what really gets me mad about Phil every time I see it. I see Phil like, and I, uh, there's so many clips of this. Just check Twitter where he's like, "Well, we've been streaming for an hour now, and we haven't reached our subscription oh, you're goal. About we haven't reached calling? our donation goal. We haven't. Why? How? Well, we've reached our donation goal, but we haven't reached our subscription goal. Like, how are you mad you know, at people you know for need? not giving you free money? We need a nobody fog does that. Too. We need a foghorn every time Will does a whale call. <laughs> you know, it's like it, 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 <laughs> have it, it reach it, out across the land. It, like, yeah, I've e begged. All right, we've seen it. I've been everybody's video done where, it from time yeah, to time because you get frustrated. The entire the internet shamed me for doing it, right? But show me where I got mad that nobody gave me money. Show me where I, I either inkling in my mind. I, I can show you where, I can't even where Phil could have bought it. that Tesla that you wanted. Yeah, I know he could. That's the, one of the things that drives me crazy. Is he does he has in the past made good money now, based on everything I've seen so far, that can't be real anymore. The the view numbers are worse than mine. How is that possible, Phil? If your YouTube channel is doing worse than mine, and I've been at this game for 17 years, and I spent the last eight years purposely tanking it because I'm an idiot, if your numbers are worse than mine. What is going on? I, you know the money ain't there. His you tell no, me. No, no, the money's there. His begging is otherworldly. Like, he, he, he spends six hours a day, seven days a week with this e-bag mess. Well, six days a week. He has a day off. Subscribe, donate, or get the f*** out. Yeah, subscribe. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Because he makes $100,000 a year. Like, to put you that think? in perspective, I make, like, forty. So I make, like, a third mm. of what Phil makes doing, doing my YouTube channel. But for some reason, Phil, who has a business degree has no foresight in his whole life. There's never been a time I've come home and accidentally ran out of fucking money. It's like, oh, I woke up today and, you know, my, I'm, it's out of cash. You know, there was, a bank, there, there was a bank overdraft. I guess that means I don't got no money. I need, I need you guys to tip. Like, I've never got upset at somebody for hitting me with a super chat because for those who don't know, super chats, YouTube takes a cut out of, right? Phil can't have that cut taken out. He needs the tips today. So he has like this alternate link that you can link so he can put it right into his bank account today so he can buy his groceries. How is this a man with a successful business when you're asking people to give money today so you can go buy fucking groceries? I get paid once a month, Phil. You get paid once a month. Have a business foresight and be able to ration your money out till you get to the next paycheck. Or made a foreign concept. Save your fucking money. Yeah. So, but like when you Goldust and John Cena were having a Black Black Lives Friday sale. <laughs> yeah. Save your fucking money, so when you when you have a bad month, you have money to fall back on. So a foreign but, fucking concept. Did I? I but they're, re, bad they're reissuing spending. the British Bulldogs. <laughs> I, I feel bad about that spending ninety nine cents. He's waiting for the market. I feel bad about spending ninety nine cents on Pokemon Go for Marie oh, Day on oh, Sunday. This is coming. And at least I'm getting exercise for that. How do you buy that sh in a match three game? At least me and my girlfriend are walking around a park on Sunday to catch sheep, imaginary sheep. It costs 99 cents, dude. You know what we should do? We, we, we should all get together on stream and play WWE champions. Like, That's it. Uh, I'm not putting money into it. That looks game looks stupid. It does look the stupid. Problem. I've never played it before in my life, but we should yeah, all get I'll together do it, though. It. We should get an emulator and then log into it Look, yeah, and then stream it on live. Here's the thing about these mobile games that a lot of people don't realize, and I, I'm talking to you if you spend money on these mobile games, okay? Raid, Shadow Legends, whatever it is, okay? All of these games, including my favorite, A Matter of the Gathering Arena, you spend money on those games to get ahead, but you don't actually get ahead because they then match you with people 
or match you with computers or match you with AI. Yeah, that's that's up to the new level that you're at, right? So you're like, you think, oh, I'm skipping the grind. I'm skipping the grind. The game is the grind. That's the game. You're skipping the game when you pay for that shit, okay? You're not, the game doesn't get easier. The game doesn't get better. The game doesn't change. It's the same grind than the same game, only the colors or the graphics are a little different. Ooh, pretty colors. Are you yeah. four? Well, well, to be fair, Boogie, this is kind of like positive Phil. He has like a 95% win rate on WWE champions. Does he really? Yeah. Well, it's worth it then. Like, 100 grand? Like sure. he's, he's one of the best actually, players yeah, yeah. on the game. Like he's, he's up there. <laughs> I'd rather have a hundred grand worth of hookers. I gotta be honest. With you. I, I, me too. Me too. At least you got something to tell your kids, right? You can't tell your kids about the yeah, exactly. swimming pool. <laughs> yeah. But, but. And, then, I, and again, my biggest insult for all of this, I'm so sorry to dominate the conversation, but I'm just so mad at Phil. I, I'll try to make this the last thing I say, okay? But to think that DSP is better than me, even me, but much less. Everybody that shops at a Walmart, you think you're better than anybody, Phil? You are the kind of person that you you have everybody's dream job. When I was growing mm -hmm. up playing video games, I wanted to play video games and earn a living doing it. And you know what? I do. I have for the last 15, 16 years. I'm so blessed to do that. The day that I get mad about that is the day that I've completely lost touch, not just with my audience, but with humanity. You are living your dream job and you're pissed You're just trying off. to track him into drama. He's, he's not about drama. He's about positivity, guys. I genuinely, I, you know, I don't, you need I don't, to spend about $100,000 on therapy, Phil. Because like, I'm okay, you, I'm done. you can get your dick sucked for a living and eventually you're just gonna get raw. Anybody, any any job can turn into a sour apple long enough. My my big issue is feels he thinks that we are sticking into like the low cow like persona where we're actually trying we're rising above it. You know, like my my value has never been higher, Phil, in the last five or six years than when Low Cow Podcast came out. You know what's gonna happen a year from now? We're still gonna be doing this. We're gonna forget about you. And you're still going to be begging for money on Thanksgiving when you should be spending it with your family. You're going to be waking up hoping you don't overdraft, hoping somebody comes through and hits you with a hundred dollars so you can get some fucking bagels and jam on your successful business. That's what's going to end up happening, Phil. Well, and look at it this way, Phil. Whenever you think you're bigger than two, two nine, Boogie two nine eight, look. Oh, I just got Hulk Hogan. Boogie got an LA ten, you know. So there you go, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> I will say, I will say, Phil. Each person. In this chat, I don't think any of us live streamed on Thanksgiving. We spent it with our family and friends knowing that the paycheck from this podcast is coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Got some hookers and booze and cocaine. <laughs> there you go, guys. Well, you know, I, I find it really interesting that um, Wings is talking about, uh, you know, his second birth. But... Jesus Christ, boy. He's like teacher's pet or something like that. You see the comments? Oh, Wings is such a good guy. Wings, oh, I don't, oh wow. He just seems like a normal person. What, what is oh, with this? Oh, man? yeah, Wings. That, that's because they normally see me playing Call, Call of Duty. And I've always you're said, a, if you you're a suck off. <laughs> you're <laughs> sucking <laughs> off the audience. I mean, I'm the only person here that said I wanted to kill our boss. <laughs> well, Jordan, really? well, I think I might have said that. Jordan, no. <laughs> Jordan, let me ask you a question, though. What's up? I seen a video. Somebody tweeted at me, and I thought instead of watching, I would just ask you: Did you call me an incel on your yes. live stream? One hundred and ten. Really? Break that down, please, for me. Spent two hundred k. Well, How can you be an incel? <laughs> How do you own a mirror? I suspect you might not. But I mean, like, come oh, on. At least I got here. my let's hair. Be fair here, Boogie. If if you took away all the money sex that you've had in your life. And you just included like your wife and your current girlfriend. My body count's higher was, than yours. I was broke till oh. I was thirty-four. What's your body count? Twelve. Twelve. Right, well, you know, I. I, I what I, was your body count, my fuckers? You remember it? Mine was seven. Yeah, mine was seven. It's currently Jeez. eight, unless you count all that nonsense. You know. How many with fuckers? Oh, I stopped counting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not. It's, I'm not happy about it, but that's how I just stopped counting. You stopped counting. Did yeah. you count them for a while? I did. 
yeah, I think those parties. Dude, are you ever been with a hooker? Uh, I don't know. Maybe you can't say this because no, you're no. married, but uh, have you ever been nah, with? The, n- too many. Never. Women, too many women out there willing to give it away for free to pay for it. Yeah, never, not once. Not once. Did you want L.A. ten? Nah. You're a big star. I see, my, my, the, here's the issue with me, right? Like, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and mm. like, do do you, do I think like some like Hollywood actress is good looking? Sure. But yeah. that's not what my body desires. I kind of have a type. Oh. My type is corn-fed, brown hair, curly hair, voluptuous. Bumpkin. That, that's, you know, <laughs> like, like, like that's my type. That's what I go for. Bumpkin. I, you know, <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll, I'll tell you what I learned more than anything through that experience, other than to, you know, keep your money. Um, I learned that some of the most... <laughs> physically attractive people are some of the ugliest inside I've ever seen, right? Like, not everybody has the advantage of being both ugly on the outside and inside like me, right? But a a lot of these people (laughs) I met through that hobby, they were just the most self-centered, narcissistic, and that's coming from me, self-centered, narcissistic, hateful, bigoted, racist monsters, man. You're dealing with people that gave up, Boogie, though. They gave up. They gave up on, I mean... You know, so they gave up on life. That's that's the girls' version of giving up. They just tapped out. Fuck this shit. Wait, I need wait, money. I, I got some questions for you. First off, <clears throat> at what point in your life did you start realizing that you needed like fashion tips? Because you used to have this like goatee thing mm-hmm. that was fucking terrible. Like, did, did your first wife was, like yeah, yeah, yeah. be like, "Yo, you got to stop this. You know, grow the full beard." No one ever did because, okay, so here's always been my thought process when it comes to personal grooming. And you you prove me wrong, boys, okay? No one's going to look at me and be like, oh, he's all together except that goatee, right? Like that's the one bad thing. (laughs) If you can look over the morbid obesity, the giant forehead, the, 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 the brash attitude of the idiocy, if you can look past all that, you're not going to stop the goatee. You're going to look past it, right? Tim no, Wayne's, no, no. your beard sucks too. I mean, let's be honest. You have a terrible beard. What are you jumping on his goatee for? I mean, my beard's great your beard's, right now. But when, when, your beard. So when's the last time you said, like you went in and had it trimmed? Oh, I'd trim it myself. I mean, am I, am I, am I, I've been three weeks and I got to go. When was the last time you had tr- yours trimmed? I mean, my girlfriend trimmed mine last ago. week and needs to get trimmed again. Girlfriend, do we get it professionally done? No, you don't. Nah, you nah, look nah, sharp. Don't, don't, don't spend that money. I might go somewhere else. I might mean, go food or medicine. Do that shit yourself. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I was like, I don't consider Boogie an ugly person. Like, he calls himself ugly all the time. Like, maybe when his teeth were all like snaggle toothed and shit like that. That was and, funny. And he had like the beard. But like, right now, Boogie's a good looking guy. He's just fat. Oh, you coming I on remember. to me? And I was going to ask, I, I like, remember. Boogie, do you, like, like, do you put yourself around people that you're naturally better looking than to make yourself feel better? <laughs> That hard. Because you know it ain't hard when you when your hobby is mad at the gathering. It's real easy to to find some people (laughs) that don't look as good as you. It's pretty easy. God, I'm the best looking motherfucker in this room. (laughs) Yeah, but like if you went to a Magic the Gathering room, he's a stud. Have you ever been to one of these places, Tommy? You ever went to like one of those gaming rooms? And he's got you two cred too, so he's gonna. No, I'm being so serious. Like the first you thing that hits in, you is when you open the door. The smell. There's a smell. Oh, oh really? Oh my lord, yeah. dude. Does it really smell? It's I just so, thought that was like it's a, way like it's gotten better. But yeah. 15 years ago, 10 years ago, still, you would open a game room. It smelled like a sweat lodge. It really did. Oh my lord. And none of these people. God, I'll never forget one they, of my favorite. They had stories. to uh, change the rules in Super it, Smash tournaments because it, it, I thought it was it a bullshit. Like they lodge changed the rules in Magic the Gathering to say you have to shower. They do. It, that's in the floor rules now. You have to come regularly groomed. I'll tell you one of my favorite stories. 1998. I walk into this little gaming shop, Gallery of Champions. I worked at it later in life. But I walked in and there was this dude, and I think we call him like Bear or something, because he's like 7,000 foot tall and like heavy set or whatever. He had open wounds that uz- oozed pus out of his legs, <laughs> and he wore shorts so he could clean it off during magic events, right? Oh so like, my God. And I'm like, go to the doctor. And that sh- did not heal, man. That was like that for a year that he was coming oh. around that shop. Oh Jesus, that's too funny. It's, it's, truly, it's truly baffling. Um, I get it. Like I get it. Some of us are depressed. Some of us has issues. Some of whatever. But look, if I'm the nastiest mother, if I'm not the nastiest motherfucker in the room, get a hose. Truly, yeah, fix some shit. I never got the impression you guys don't shower. 
I mean, I, mean, I imagine I, I, I have hygiene, but there, there's times like let, let, let me throw the real just out. When you're when you're a big person, Boogie can back me up on this. There's going to be times where you neglect hygiene because you're unhappy with yourself. Right. And this happens for multiple people. That's why I always give out the advice on my stream. If you're depressed, you can't get better to the same place that you got sick. What you need to do is you need to wake up every day, brush your teeth and shower. If nothing else, do those two things and it will make your make life so much better. Just those two things. Now you, you don't even got to go nowhere. Just invest some time into yourself. And I think a lot of people skip this step. They don't invest time into themselves or they don't value things. Like there's so many guys I've seen that if they just concentrate, like, let me go get a nice haircut. Let me feel better about myself. How much that positivity will roll over into the next thing. And like, it ain't there at mother like Magic the Gathering events or in my case, Dungeons and Dragons. That's what I like to play back in the day, Dungeons and Dragons. You always see like that one normal guy at a magic event too. Like, you know, he's like, he just likes the game, you know, his girlfriend and him are like going out later that night and you just know he's there in part. So he does, he just feels so good about himself because he did the, at least the bare minimum that day. He took a wet rag and ran it across his pits and tits. Before he walked in. And I, I hate to interrupt you, Boogie, but yeah. do you think Wing should start giving TED Talks? <laughs> he's like... I don't he's know. Like, he he's, is, he's the golden boy of this podcast. I saw the comments, man. It's Jordan, like, oh, Wings Jordan, has never done anything wrong, right? He's like, he's, Jordan, he's the perfect angel. He's Shorty Peterson. <laughs> well, like, like, Wake up, take a shower. Like, what most people hold against me? Did I set on Pankula already? Like, the vast yeah, majority really? of it. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to get fired if you don't start saying some outlandish. I, I thought Bring it was just su su subscribe, donate, or get the f*** out. Oh, that was a good one. You ever see, did you hear the metal <laughs> rendition where, it's, where like people like No, I missed that one. <laughs> so, you, when, you, when, you were, uh, when they were all making songs about you, did that bother you? No. Um, I forget the guy who used to make I mean, songs well, let me, about let you. Let me clarify here. Liquid, uh, Liquid Richard, Richard, right? Liquid, Liquid Richard. 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 Yeah, yeah, that was good. Brought Shout out Liquid Richard. Yesterday, or the day before. Oh, really? Yeah, it's called cool. Redemption Art with the A-R-K, like art, like I'm big as an art. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, check that out. Yeah, and he used out. like AI to like take my voice and like say some real outlandish shit. So like it's real raunchy really. if you want to look at it. I want to check it out. But um, I, uh, I actually Richard, yeah. enjoyed the Liquid Richard stuff. But yeah. it bothered me a little when it first came out because it's like 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 low cal and kind of like it has waves like you, you every little wave you get a little bit more mad then you realize man I wish it went back to that way like yeah, I wish yeah, they would start yeah. making songs about me again instead of like sending the ATF to my fucking house. I thought it peaked in, in like the funniest stuff I saw was in tw tw I think twenty eighteen. Right, because I I'm I'm a little older. I didn't grow up with you guys. Like you know, a lot of the guys I work with on SFTP, they they grew up with you guys. You know, they were they were there. They were like in the stream during when you were playing Syndicate and stuff like that. So I I didn't go. I had to go back. But I, the funniest stuff that you came out with is when you were getting Syndicate match. I didn't. Then you get me getting I team did killed jump. and did not you get jump. me thrown. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll I'll tell you the most disappointing thing you've ever done in my eyes. Oh, let's hear. Jory, do you know what it is? You could have got look here and listen put on your boxing gloves. The left could have been look here, the right oh, could yeah. have been listen. I could have done it. You could have like, gave me a look here, listen, dude. And I why did they you? gave us gloves at the at the event? They still would have taped that shit on for you after? They would have rotated it on do, marker? I, I, I literally thought about getting custom gloves that said look here, listen. And then they told me that we're gonna get gloves at the event that they had to be sanctioned. You would have knocked my out if you just let him mark her look here I did and knock you out no, got, you didn't see the box <laughs> <laughs> yeah he did TKO ain't a KO TKO ain't a KO Jordy don't you feel kind of dumb for banning people for writing look look here listen considering oh, that you know it's kind of like I, I felt like oh, I, really? I fumbled the back hard but I was an emotionally different person back in 2018 sure, I, fair I think enough. people forget passage of time happens right everybody wants me to be the guy from PKA I was on PKA last mm. in 2014 that's a decade ago <laughs> you know at this point <laughs> And like, I started getting trolled in December of 2017. That's six years ago, you know? Yeah, that was bad. See, most of the you stuff know. I was watching was, like, from the last year. And the thing I remember is you weren't learning. You, like, like eventually you got to lean into it. And I, I don't know what happened. No, the the doctor I, got the your medicine leaned, right or Kelly or whatever. The reason I, don't know I never happened, leaned but into you, it is, like, when I leaned into it, it made them more vicious. Like, if I started having fun with it, right? They would ramp it up. They'd be like, "Oh, 
that what we what we're using against him doesn't bother him anymore. Let's send cops with guns to his house. Let's send the ATF. Let's like here here's something they used to do. They um if I was ever let them know I was going to be out the house, they would send like a they would call like a local mechanic. And they would send and say, my truck is broke down. Can I have it towed to their shop? <laughs> that's terrible. And like, wow, that's, that's creative so at like least. They, so like they would have, the mechanic would send a tow truck out, pick my truck up, and take it to their shop. Oh, God. How many times that happened? It happened one time. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then I, I made sure that it wasn't going to happen again. But luckily, they picked the shop that knew me. Like, I, it was the actual shop I went to. Hmm. So, like, all I had to do is foot the tow bill. <laughs> I heard some little cow shit. What, what's with you and Thanksgiving shit on Thanksgiving? What's the matter with you? I heard, holiday. I watched your stream. It's a bullshit uh, what's holiday. What's not a bullshit holiday? It's not a bullshit holiday. Right, People getting together with the families, I, chowing down. Well, that, what the, well, the meaning's not bullshit. Like, hanging out with your family's not bullshit. But the whole idea behind it is just to sell food. And realistically, like, it's Black You can say Friday. about anything, though. It's Black Friday at this point. Like, but like, you can say that about anything. You can say it about Friday? Christmas. Oh, Black Friday's all year, all week long. It's a, it's a, it's a capitalist holiday. But you could, you could, you could, you could say, well, so what? I mean, you can say that about anything. You can say about Mother's Day. You can say that about uh, any day. It's just about, you yeah, know, Yeah, but Mother's stuff. Day, you can get away with making a card. You can't go, you well, can't do you Thanksgiving better. without cooking a bird and spending, you know, Four grand and have. Like I've gone to Chinese buffets for Thanksgiving. Oh, you know, for you can get. Well, I got a question. Did you have a good Thanksgiving though, George? Yeah, I, I had a great Thanksgiving. Because I, I know you I and Kelly can eat. Sucks, though. Mm. Uh, what did you have? Mm -hmm. What did you? What did you guys have? Oh, we had the standard. We had like glazed ham. We had like mm. like sweet peas with potatoes in them, and you know, the standard. But it's I like, just like hearing. I just like hearing about food. If I'm being honest with you, yeah. describe it slower do for it, me, please. You say thank you. You say thank you, Jordy, or just acted like you expected it. You better have treated it right. It's my, <laughs> Honestly, I'm kind of you say in this thing. Like I what go the, to what's the matter with I you? go to Thanksgiving as an appeasal. Like just I don't <laughs> want to be there, and I usually get McDonald's on the way home. <laughs> I pick the smallest plate possible, eat a little bit of everything, and get McDonald's on the way home. <laughs> You have lost your honorary God. fat card if you don't like sweet potato casserole. Like, what is have going you ever on? Gone to, have you ever gone to McDonald's after a Thanksgiving meal? I mean, it doesn't even, yeah, doesn't even register. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Who cooked yesterday? Is Cully a bad cook? No, no, no. My my, my stepmother cooked yesterday. Oh, God. It's a bad Tom cook. <laughs> it, it, the food wasn't bad. I just don't like Thanksgiving food. Like, I think all of it's just... You don't like, like you know, you don't you, like you potatoes know, you guys and gravy. Such, you, you know, don't like I don't, stuffing. You don't you, like you know, sweet I, potato I, I casserole. You don't like pumpkin pie. You don't mouth. like lemon pie. You don't like. Oh my god! I don't even do you know, know you. Do you know we have to comb the earth in Germany to find the American food to have Thanksgiving? And I'm grateful every year. And you're going to McDonald's? What the hell's the matter with you? McDonald's you know what? I hope food. this. I hope this teacher's pet act with the fans ends today when they hear that. Yeah. I hope they start giving you. Again, you deserve. Yeah, but let me tell you, let me let me give you my McDonald's order so these motherfuckers hate on me proper. I got the number seven <laughs> with the large fry and the. Oh coke. my god! <laughs> Why you, you guys said? Well, did you both have surgeries and you're stuffing your face like that? I mean, look, I got a weight problem now too, but Jesus Christ, you guys got the. Uh, what, 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 I got, I got the gastric sleeve. He got the he he got the uh, gastric. Yeah, he can face. eat more. He can eat more than me. I have to try harder to stay this fat. You know. Why do you guys eat like it must be a it's that's it's, gotta it, be like I, a honestly, drug it's psychological. Not, it's not it's not exactly, yeah, that it's fucks me up. What it is is the soda. Like oh, dog, you like I, soda? Like even when I got back to eating like bad again, I I was like I hung around like 360, 360 pounds, which, which is a monster to most people. But to me, that's skinny Jordy, right? But then like I got back on the soda, and like I can drink some. Soda, like nobody. Told I like me, soda too. That's a bit. Nobody it's, it's, that gets told me, me that well. you're not supposed to drink a 12 pack a day. You know. <laughs> nobody told you that, Jordy. You, nobody Hillbilly. told you that. Nobody. Come at me nobody. Like this. I knew I was doing it wrong. You, nobody told you. Nobody <laughs> set you down and said, "Son, you're gonna be diabetic by the time you're 12. You're gonna lose your toes." 13. You know what you, know, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, hate about me the most, Boogie? That what? even at 500 pounds, I wouldn't even pre-diabetic. I guess. Were you? Were you not? He I was not. What's the A1C right now? 
My A one C, I couldn't tell you right off the top of my hand, but like mine's a five point one, baby. I'm <laughs> I, I, I got, I got, I, I got this picture of like Boogie shoving his face full of soda. Though. Like, I, like every piece of my blood work is exactly where it should be for my age range. I got these pictures of Boogie shoving his face full of soda and crying. I, mean, I can't believe I'm doing this. And then it <laughs> wakes is just, oh, oh it's just nothing about do. I literally have it right here sitting next to me. Like it's an unopened Coca-Cola. Oh God. I mean, at least I'm drinking like, zero I woke calorie, up this morning, right? You know? And I was going, I was getting, I took my shower, brushed my teeth. And I was getting ready for my stream. Like I'm kind of thirsty. So instead of being like a normal human being and grabbing like a bottle of water, I grabbed this motherfucker, a fucking Coca-Cola that I had sitting in my refrigerator. And I didn't drink it, but that was my go-to, right? If I wanted something to drink during my morning stream, it was a fucking Coca-Cola. That was it. Can you not problem. tolerate the diet stuff? How about a cup of coffee? How about, can you tolerate coffee? No, like, no, like, if I'm going to kill myself, I'm going to kill myself proper. I ain't going to fucking take, the, take the, the scenic route. Like, I want Coke. I don't want Diet Coke. <laughs> if, I, if I wanted Diet Coke, I'd just drink water. Hey, Tom, I, have a, I do have a story for you. Like, I, I've never cried while drinking soda, but here's a true story, okay? <laughs> I went to Krispy Kreme. I got a just, dozen donuts, okay? Oh, you sick f you. <laughs> I ate five of them, like four or five of them on the way home. I got them home, and I realized that I was going to eat the rest of them. I didn't throw them away, like right away. So I threw them away. He did. And then oh, right, no. later that joke. night, I oh, pulled them no! out of the trash. And I oh, ate no. them while I was crying about the fact that I was eating <laughs> <laughs> the thing oh, I did. Oh, all fat people oh, have this story, dog. I remember sitting in my truck one night because, like, I live in a like a hobo, you know, backwoods town called Conway, and so like the only thing open after twelve is McDonald's. I remember sitting in my truck crying because I knew I was going to go to McDonald's and I couldn't stop myself. It was like one thirty in the morning. It was on, cold. I'm what did you get? What did you get though? That day, I don't remember that. And probably a double quarter pounder. That was, my, that was my jam back then. You get the double quarter pounder I, with the extra onions and the Big Mac sauce. That's the that's the that's the <laughs> pounder fucking menu. Mm. So you guys cried the idea me of you from... setting in your big truck, like at a park, eating. This no, I was, it was in my driver. I was in my driveway. Ball in your eyes. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Why is this so trash? Don't know. Sleep so my food wasn't in the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but here's, here's something for you. What's the laziest thing you've ever done in your life? Laziest thing? Jeez, exists like, like, I don't know, Let the me, last you five mine years, to, probably? You, you want me to do mine to give you time to think? Yeah, 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 yeah. There was this one time I was playing Diablo 2. This is 2004-ish. I had one of these chairs. I was kind of leaning back in the chair, and I was, I've been playing for like 12 hours at this point, and I fell out of my chair and hit the floor. Because it kind of rolled back on me. And instead of getting up, I just went to sleep. Oh, my God, Jordy. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Jesus shit. Jesus Christ. There is not a story. I am I am the most desperate little cow on the planet. And I don't know how to have a story that bad. That is insane. I got another one. I got another one. <laughs> Hit me. We used to have this little dog named Peanut. It's a, it was, it was a, it wasn't a miniature poodle, but it was a toy poodle. So it was a little smaller. You didn't need him, did you? But no, I didn't. Need him. <laughs> I didn't feel like going but to the I, fridge, but, but so I, was I just having, ate I was the having dog. barbecue wings. I had wings all sauce all over my face and my beard. And Peanut was walking by. I picked the dog up and wiped my you face with the dog because <laughs> he was black fur. Oh God! Oh God, Jordy. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to like the food I didn't like. I'd give it the dog on the table. I never did shit like that. You ever use the dog as a napkin? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm throwing food I didn't like to. So I sometimes give it my cat, you know. Oh. <laughs> I'm like sure Boogie does I mean, some lazy shit. What's the lazy I mean, the laziest done? thing I probably did was hire my roommate after my divorce so I didn't have to do nothing. <laughs> That's probably the laziest <laughs> thing I ever did. You know, it's like, I don't want to do anything. I noticed in your documentary, your house is immaculate. Like, well, it's, it's not it's immaculate, bad, sure. but it ain't bad. Yeah. Yeah. It looked pretty good to me. It, it looked we good like for a fat person because I expected like some fucking like hoarder shit coming out of there. Like there, there'd be like a, a Pac-Man doll that's got, like got like a pack of food wrappers <laughs> around him and shit like that. Do you, I mean, yeah, that's what like, I was do you make an effort to clean yeah. your house or does your roommate do it? We, 
I I do a little bit. My roommate does a little bit. Um, Desi, of course, now she keeps the place very nice. But, I mean, I always felt like I'm lucky because I am a hoarder, but the thing a hoarder is, like, playing cards, right? Like, you know, so it's easy to store that. Thank God I don't have to, like, have giant piles of stupid everywhere. I do, but at least it looks kind of nice or, you know, at least plastic garbage like, or whatever. If you, look at the, you look at my background, it looks like shit. You know, like, I mean, mine like, ain't gorgeous. Look, but if you look, like, my, my room is actually clean. And, like, people wanted me so f***ing bad to be, like, this nasty f***ing trash hoarder. They desired it. And I've just never been to my person. My mother would beat the shit out of me if I was that person growing up. I'll, t- I'll, I'll tell you the biggest reason I'm not like that is because that's my mom was kind of like that. The living room was always scrubbed as clean as she could get it, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's where people would see. But when it came to uh, kitchen, generally too. But when it came to like back bedrooms and stuff, they were piled to the top and they were covered in dog shit. So here's one of my favorite stories. We were oh, like in God. kindergarten and they were like talk. We we're going over our colors and they're like, all right, so what's an example of something red? You know, somebody raises their hand, like, apple, right? What's well, something orange? It's the orange, right? Then they said white, and I raised my hand, and I was like, dog poops white. <laughs> and she's like, no, 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 that's actually brown. And I'm like, no, 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 if it's there long enough, it turns white. It dries out. It becomes white. Because there was dog sh- in every one of these bedrooms. Oh, God. Well, this is growing up, you said? Yeah, this is growing up. And then, like, when I would visit my mom before she passed in 2009, she had, like, a little chihuahua. And it was an indoor outdoor She's dog, everywhere. but she wouldn't always let it out. But like I would step in <laughs> dog sh- every in day house. I was in that house because she just didn't clean it up. So, I mean, I have dogs, but they, I, they you go outside, boys. I take you out every two hours. I get up to make sure you're out every two hours, like in the middle of the night. I just I, I, I can't. I can't. My house might be junked up and the background behind me is junked up. Right. But it's not dirty. It's not filthy. You're not going to find grime or dog shit. Or rats or none of that, you know. I can't stand it. I would rather put a bullet in my head. I'm telling you. Mm. What's that dog's name of yours? Sammy. Sammy? Oh, who the one with the wall eyes or the, the, the uh, yeah that, that, I got, that ugly that ugly mutt you have. Sammy is <laughs> Sammy's my soul dog. I love soul him. Dog. Like what, I, I mean, like we're with. Yeah, I don't is, like small is, dogs. Is they Leo. Should, I think, I think they should put all small dogs to sleep. I mean, they're not. God didn't want it that way. I mean, dog dogs supposed to be like I don't know, herding sheep and. Shit. To be fair, small dogs are proof that that God doesn't exist. Uh, I, well, so <laughs> God doesn't want that. But, well, like you know that. Well, small dogs are small dogs. Creation. Like it, it's yeah, selective. Yeah, breeding. exactly. You know, you're gonna go to hell for for having a small dog. You know, that, small uh, dogs are cats that don't hate you. Uh, you know, that's yeah. that's the but, point. But you're that's blowing it with God. Right. God didn't want that. He wanted us like screwing around like it's a Frankenstein. That Tommy, you think <laughs> you think with my history <laughs> my that when I get to the pearly gates. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tommy, you, you, made think, a, you had a Frankenstein. God didn't want that. You think when I get to the pearly gates, that's going to be the deal breaker? It, yes, Tommy, that I own God, a small cause dog. Because you're, you're, really? you're playing with his. You're bla- <laughs> yes, because you're playing with his creation. You're right. All right. So you had so you had some hoes. Big deal. You can <laughs> forgive your way out of that. But you, you, then now you're now you're playing God. So you're in trouble, mother. I ain't what breeding them. I'm just buying them. You know. I, I don't like small dogs. I don't kick them or anything like that. I bought a couple girls dogs that I was dating before. Why? What? <laughs> did you get to keep the dog, or did they take no, no, them? They, they, they probably they took them. The dog. I'm sure yeah. they took. Yeah, I'm but sure. Like, um, <clears throat> It's called long-term relationship boogie. It's when women want to be around you for more than like an afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, most of them only made it two hours. How long have you been dating Des now? You know, me and Desi have been together for uh, six months. Six months? Yeah, she moved in oh, in so June. You, you yeah. told the internet right away about her. What are you, nuts? No, we waited. Uh, so we waited until like July. But the reason we had somebody. That was six months ago. We had somebody <laughs> who figured out that I followed her on Instagram. And they were like uh, trying to like scoop it out. And they were going to dox us oh, about so it. Tr- All right, and then, so we're just like, ah, we'll just tell her. I, I it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And originally, we were going to keep it quiet for a real long time. Uh, and yeah. I, 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 she was I, like 15, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Tommy, no! <laughs> I will tell you, I did have a successful Thanksgiving with her family. Went down there, stayed there oh, for two God, days. I wanted... We were invited, believe it or not. I was surprised. I, I have one question. It hit me. 
are you older than her father? <laughs> I mean, let me look. Me, me, and him sat Desi down, and we gave her a history lesson about what it was like to fight in the First World War. You know? Yeah. And no, how I'm, old is he? Say, don't me, fucking dodge. I don't know his actual like, age, there's, but there's a don't, there's a don't good dodge that his question. Might be older than her father. Yeah. No. Very well. It's actually likely. Yeah. I, you know? I, I'm definitely older than her mom. I can tell you that. I'm a six. I'm definitely, older, definitely older than her mom. Yeah. And her mom. Okay. So let me tell. Oh, okay. So the, how the, old is you know how old you know, how old is his dad? How, how old is her dad? Come on now. She's got Tell like me. two father figures in her life. One's kind of all right. Like well, how would the guy that's the, the guy that she considers older than me? The the biological dad I think is younger than me by a couple. <laughs> <of years. laughs> that's sure. what I wanted to hear. Tommy, buddy. you Good got job. boys or girls? <laughs> I got a boy and a girl. All right. Well, what would you do if either one of them brought in a significant other that was older than you? Older than me? Yeah. Oh, I would. I didn't even think of that. Better as long as not boogie. <laughs> 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 yeah. like, I'll like, tell you. Um, just say your boy brings in a woman that's in me. her sixties. Like, you know what? You know what? I tell you what. I tell you what. If she, let's say she was, let, let's talk. My my daughter's sixteen. Let's pretend she was like twenty or something like that. Okay, okay twenty one. Okay. She brings home a fifty year old guy. There's obviously some kind of fetish thing going on there, or she's a gold digger. One of the two. You know what I mean? So could like, be both. either way, could be both. Either, it, well, it could be a little bit of both, or it could be one or the other. Either way, there isn't going to be anything I can do about it. You know, short of threatening the guy, which never really works. Right. What were you telling me, Boogie, that uh, you had the talk with the yeah, old yeah. man? So, so how'd that go? The brother, older brother, he was like into YouTube culture stuff, so he was like super excited to have me there. The mom is all about just like, hey, my daughter's really happy. That makes me really happy. Therefore, I'm happy with you. Um, the stepdad definitely had his opinions, uh, and was, was he, both was times I've met broke? him. He's been pretty quiet. <laughs> that's, that's one of them, I think, for sure. They did watch the documentary, I think, and uh, it was. A, <laughs> I'm so. I really wish they had not. But uh, I bet. both times, stepdad has basically said, "Take care of my daughter. I'll end you," which yeah. I I think is very respectable. In fact, if if a parent doesn't say that in this situation, you're not much of a, oh, a dad. I'll be like, my dog, mm. quit with those fake threats. You know. D- do you see what I look like? Do you see what I eat? I fear no death. <laughs> Not fear Jordy, death, my friend. Jordy, I, I'm telling you, sometimes I wonder if someone just comes to put a bullet in you, they'd be doing you a favor. Uh, just to be mm. honest. Oh, you take more than oh, one, dog. Big boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I, so he so he gave you the threat, but you you got along. I mean, yeah, it was, it yeah, was yeah. a good trip. You didn't, it was a good he wasn't trip. that uncomfortable. Food was good. Uh, you know, we sat and bullshit and watched some movies and talked about life and stuff. And then, uh, you know, at some point, talk about the horse. No, 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 that didn't come up. No, thank movie. God. How do you? E- how would you even? Talk about so, like, would you, how let does me that ask you something, up? Steve. Where does my little girl rank between LA 10 and Arkansas 8? <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd start telling him about kinky ass sex I had with his daughter. <laughs> I, just, I brought a cyanide pill just in case that topic came up. <laughs> I don't know what to say in that situation. One thing you know about me, oh, I am not shy. <laughs> oh, Jesus God. Christ. I think that's enough, gentlemen. I think we gave them all all we can give them on it. We all. I took my Thanksgiving dinner off for this. Well, I mean, I had my dinner, but this is my day. Uh, we so we don't have this. In, uh, Phil, he's a businessman. <laughs> he's more successful than us, but none of us have to. Yes. You know, make he's sure so that our groceries are bought by tips he's so during the day. He's so successful. He doesn't even have to shop at the most popular grocery store in the world. I'm glad he he's takes, so much better than you. He takes your money. He takes your money that you donate to him, and he pays twenty percent more at Target because he's better than you. Never forget <laughs> it. Never point. forget it. Mm. Better than you, better than us. Mm-hmm. It's a bully pod. He said we were a bully podcast. You know, Can you, know you believe the worst that? Part I can't about believe that Target is. It's like somebody stole his Corolla wheel at the Target, right? Oh, what are you talking about? You never, you didn't see that? What? Like Phil? No. Phil had one wheel that one. stole off his car. <laughs> like Cat took it to her, to, to work. And I think she works at some kind of grocery store. And when she came out, somebody had her car on jacks, and just one Corolla wheel was missing. <laughs> and Phil had oh, a begging on to replace his six hundred dollar Corolla oh, wheel. Jesus Christ! Dude, that's probably sitting in like Duty Streams' <laughs> living room. <laughs> it's like right his now. man cave. It's like his prized <laughs> possession. He like I, bought I just it off of like some all guy. the trolls like trying to find out and, and like find the market for this Corolla wheel because it's like the most prized <laughs> possession of the field, like lore. <laughs> 
All right, everybody. That's another episode of Low Cal. I hope you enjoyed it. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great holiday from uh, Boogie, from Wings. Myself, all the best. Take care.